If you pass any of those and make those laws, they're unconstitutional. We have a constitution. So you wouldn't bring in anything? The constitution is not going anywhere. I understand that. Would you not bring in any new regulations? No. And there it is. No. A solitary word. Carrie Lake, on behalf of Republicans, says no. No new regulations. Despite the fact there have been 199 mass shootings since the beginning of this year. Despite the fact that children are being slaughtered in schools, outside schools, in shopping malls. No. Doesn't want to change anything. And this really is the crux of it. And this is what very few Republicans have actually come out and said. They'll make all sorts of excuses about, oh, we need to do more for mental health. Well, they don't know anything about mental health. Just the way they talk about it is proof that they know nothing about the industry of mental health, about the clinical aspect of mental health, about the cost involved in helping everybody who suffers with mental health problems, because they themselves have the mental health disorder. And their mental health disorder is that they can see children being slaughtered and they can see their parents being slaughtered with the children in their arms. And that is not enough to want to bring about any gun safety legislation. I'm not talking about taking away all guns, I'm not talking about gun control, I'm talking about gun safety regulation, where people have to be vetted before they can buy a gun where people have to have a little training, they have to register their firearm, they have to keep it locked away. These are the very simple measures that will potentially stop a significant proportion of this mass shooting epidemic. And the Republicans say no, in a single word. They have no interest. And the reason, this might sound quite macabre, but I've come to realize that it's the truth. The, the, the automatic rifle is now a mascot for the right. Uh, Republican lawmakers wear a, a pin of the rifle. They think about this as being a trophy. They think about every mass shooting being another win for the Republican Party, for the MAGA Republicans, for the, the gun lobby, for the NRA. They're so mentally deranged that the death of people is irrelevant they are owning the libs with every mass shooting that comes and goes. And as long as they manage to hold off with any kind of gun safety regulation, they are winning, taking a little piece from those soft snowflake liberals. That's what this is about. It is warfare. It is a slow civil war. 400 million guns are in the possession of American citizens. And sure, a good number respectfully know how to use those guns, but that's not the point. The point is that we regulate cars, and in the process of regulating vehicles, road traffic accidents went down significantly. The other thing to mention, of course, is that in every poll, including Fox News polls, the American citizens, in the main, over 70% of them, in some cases 80 or 81%, want checks training, regulation of gun ownership. The people want it. The American people want it. It's only the legislators. It's only those who are on the receiving end of the NRA and their gun lobby. And this is the, this is the separation, isn't it? What America wants, what the country wants, what the people want versus what the legislators are pushing for. Two completely different worlds. It's not difficult, is it? But when you throw politics into it. I mean, it's gone beyond politics as far as I'm concerned. This is like a mental health disorder, isn't it? That The mental health problem is not of the individual who causes the mass shooting. It's of the legislators who cannot legislate against mass shootings. They just want to own the libs at whatever cost, even the cost of lives of entire families, as we've seen in this recent mass shooting in Texas. So where does America go from here? Because I fear that this will, I mean, you know, piece by piece, there have been some small successes in, in certain states, raising the age that you can purchase a firearm to 21, for example, you know, so, so those who advocate for gun safety are having some local successes. But this needs to be a federal issue. I mean, I would probably set up some kind of amnesty where people can return their guns 
and be paid maybe two or three times more than the value of the weapon. And these weapons are destroyed and reduce the number of guns that are in the, in the hands of people. And the argument that, you know, a good guy with a gun, for example, you know, a law-abiding gun user. Now, this is where I don't quite understand this kind of, uh, kind of confused narrative here. Because in my view, anybody that needs to own one of these semi-automatic rifles that can kill dozens of people in seconds, they must only want them for a mass shooting, right? There is no other reason to own one of those guns because they will at some point in their future commit a mass shooting. And maybe that's the way we need to start thinking about it. Like, if you want that gun, it's because you haven't flipped out yet, you haven't lost your mind yet, you're not mentally ill yet, but you could. And in so many of these cases, the, the perpetrators of these mass shootings have flipped, and we all have the capacity to flip out. And if there is a gun that is really designed for the theatre of war in our, in our possession, then there's a good chance we will use it. So treat every single one of these high-capacity rifles as a weapon of war, and consider every owner of these guns a potential mass shooter, and work backwards from there. Because you, you, you cannot mitigate the, the human condition cannot mitigate against how somebody is going to behave at some point in the future. They might not now. They might be respectable now. But nobody starts out as a crazed individual. We are pushed to that. And unfortunately, as we've seen time and time again, the evidence is that it is far-right media that is scaring people, putting the fear of God into them, making them think that America is a terrible place. And Carrie Lake, in that interview, said it over and over again. She said you can't walk in any streets. And she mentioned Los Angeles. You can't walk in Los Angeles at night, she said first. And then she changed it to even in the day. Well, I live here and she's wrong. My point is that as long as these far-right, Christian, nationalist, extremist candidates such as Ka Carrie Lake, who lie about their election loss and claim that it was fraudulent when they just lost, they can't come to terms with that. The damage they're doing to America's democracy by saying these things is untold. And in my view, it does not come under the First Amendment free speech to lie about an election loss. That is more damaging to the country than, than anything else. And secondly, she talks about the Second Amendment. And she talks about it in, in, in a way that it's constitutional that American citizens have the right to commit a mass shooting. Now, how someone like her can make that connection, I don't know. She's been radicalized. She has been taken from doing the news in Arizona for 25 years, where she was hopefully able to provide a kind of a balanced reportage, and she's been radicalized by the likes of Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson and whoever else she is connected with. To have our leaders radicalized, to have our candidates for leadership, because she's probably going to run for the Arizona Senate now, to have our leaders radicalized and to repeat this language is going to cause more mass shootings. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me every day on the 5-Minute News podcast and on Sundays on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.